Club Express Resource Scheduling, Making a Reservation. The resource scheduling module allows clubs and associations to define resources that can be rented or reserved by members. This module is suitable for many types of clubs. For example, tennis clubs that allow members to reserve a tennis court, sailing and yacht or canoe and kayak clubs with a fleet of boats that the members can rent, there are ski clubs with a lodge where members and their families can rent rooms, there are clubs with a clubhouse that includes meeting or banquet rooms, and clubs with equipment that the members can check out on a daily or hourly basis. This video looks at reservations from the user point of view, where we learn how to reserve resources. There's a companion video called Resource Scheduling Administration that shows how administrators configure the system options and add resources. Resources can be rented hourly or daily, such as for a sailboat or a canoe, or overnight, such as a ski lodge room. In this demonstration, we will reserve a piece of equipment for several hours and a cabin for several days. Reservations operate using a shopping cart metaphor. A reservation can include more than one resource reserved at the same or at different times. The checkout process links the shopping cart to the standard Club Express transaction and payment system. Let's look at how a user can view available items and make a reservation. We're currently logged in as a regular user, and the resource scheduler has been placed on the menu. Clicking on the menu item displays the resource scheduler screen, and you'll notice that for this demo club, it's still in test mode. So we'll be able to test all of the features, but not actually generate any fee transactions. The screen shows a customizable heading that describes the items. And if a cancellation policy has been defined, clicking that button will display it. If you have a reservation in process with one or more resources in your reservation cart, a show cart button will appear at the top of the screen, allowing you to jump to the cart where you can make changes or check out. And we'll discuss the checkout process shortly. The body of the page lists the resources grouped by category. Click the View button on the right side to see the details of the resources within each category. Each category can have a descriptive heading and the detailed information about each of the items. Click the Hide button to hide the details. To demonstrate a few kinds of typical reservations, we'll reserve two items for an upcoming Balloon Club event. We will reserve a barometer logger, a piece of equipment that records barometric pressure, which is useful for hot air balloon flights. The logger is reserved by the hour, and we'll also book a cabin at the lodge that is reserved by the day, including overnight, like a hotel room. Click the Reserve button to begin the reservations process. The scheduling calendar shows a list of resources within a single category. Different categories can be selected by clicking the drop-down list above the grid. For resources that are available by the hour, for example, equipment or a meeting room, each resource is a separate column, and each screen shows a single day with the rows representing the time. Click the arrows to the left and the right of the date to move forward and backwards one day at a time. You can also click the calendar icon to select any date in the future, or the Today button to jump back to today. The calendar will only show times when the resources in that category are available, as each resource can be defined with an earliest start and latest finish date. Cells in the grid where the resource is unavailable are colored gray and are disabled. For categories that are reserved on a daily or an overnight basis, like a balloon rental or cabin, each screen shows a single month with the rows representing the days and starting from today. You can click the arrows to the right and left of the date to move forward or backward by one month at a time, and you can also click the This Month button to jump back to the current month. In either mode, when you hover over a cell that is available, it's highlighted in green ready to be clicked. So let's make our first reservation, the barometer logger, and it's reserved by the hour. Pull down the category selector and choose equipment. Then for the appropriate day and time, click on the cell in the barometer column to begin the reservation. At the top of the dialog, click the clock icon to confirm your reservation start time. The time from the cell where you initially clicked is highlighted, but you can select any available start time that day. Each resource can be configured for reservations in 15, 30, or 60 minute durations, and the available start times will reflect these settings. Once you've selected a start time, the pop-up changes to allow you to select the end time for your reservation. Each resource can be configured with a minimum and maximum reservation times, and the end time dialog will reflect these available lengths. 
In this example, the resource is configured for a minimum reservation of one hour and a maximum reservation of three hours in one hour increments. Once the start and end times have been selected, the system will calculate and show a reservation fee if one applies. You can then optionally enter a short description of what you're planning to do with the resource. To associate the reservation with an event occurring on this day, check the box and then select the event from the drop down list. Here we'll select the event scheduled for that day. Remember that we're logged in as a regular member. When logged in as an administrator, an additional field is available that lets admins make single or multiple copies of this reservation, and this is discussed in the administration video. Click the Next button to move to the next step of the reservation process, or Cancel to cancel your reservation and return to the scheduling calendar. Resource categories can be configured with a user agreement that you must sign before the reservation can be completed. This agreement can include a waiver of liability language or information on permitted and banned activities. If the screen appears, you must click I agree before you can complete the reservation. One other thing to know is that some resources are configured whereby they require approval by an administrator or coordinator. In our example, the administrator has to approve any barometer logger request before the item can be reserved. Note that a reservation can include one or more items even items from different categories. If you click Save and Checkout, you'll be taken to your reservation cart, where you can review the items in your cart and begin the checkout process, or you can choose to cancel the process. As mentioned, we also want to book a cabin at the lodge as part of this reservation. So we click Save and Add Another to add this item to your reservation cart, but continue looking at available resources and time slots. Cabins at the Lodge are resources configured to allow overnight reservations. We want to come in the day before the event on Friday and check out of the cabin on Sunday morning. So we select the Lodge category and select one of the cabins available for Friday and Saturday. For a daily reservation, the screen is a little different. Select the number of nights you wish to reserve the resource using the drop down menu. In our case, two nights. Selecting more than one night will update the reservation ending date on the screen. If the resource is configured as daily, but does not permit overnight reservations, for example, this club rents trailers for a single day, the start date and end date are the same using the time specified in the resource configuration. When logging in as an administrator, an additional field is shown that lets the admin mark this date or dates as unavailable. When checked, the window closes and the dates are grayed out on the calendar. But because we're a regular member, we simply continue with the reservation. As with the hourly resource, once start and end times or days have been selected, the system will calculate and show a reservation fee if one applies, and you can enter the description, special instructions, and link to an event. Click the Next button to move to the next step of the reservation process, or cancel to cancel your reservation and return to the scheduling calendar. Once again, if the resources category requires an agreement, it is presented. If not, the resource is added to your cart. Also note that if users want to schedule a resource for multiple non-contiguous days, for example, reserving a meeting room for the next three Wednesdays at 1 p.m., select the time slots one at a time and add each of them to your cart. For now, these two items are all we want to reserve, so let's check out. This brings us to the reservation cart. Each item in the cart is shown with its reservation name, the date, start time, duration of the reservation, and the fee. You can also specify a title for this reservation to be used on the transaction history screen and in confirmation emails. Click the Add to Calendar icon to add this reservation to your calendar. This option downloads a file that supports personal information managers such as Outlook and Google Calendar, as well as the calendars on your smartphone or tablet. And you can click a remove icon to remove an item from your reservation. If any of the resources selected have been configured to allow notifying others about the reservation, click the icon and prepare a message. You can select up to five other members to be notified about this reservation. Perhaps you'll all be staying in the same cabin. The members must be active and must not have opted out of receiving general emails from your club. When you click Save Notifications, this information is saved with the reservation 
And once it has been finalized and paid, the notifications will be sent out. You can click the Empty Cart button to cancel this pending reservation completely. You can click the Reserve Another button to continue adding items to the cart. And you can click the Complete the Reservation button to finalize the reservation. The checkout process will vary slightly depending on who is doing the reservation and whether a fee is due for any part of the reservation. When members check out, the system already knows who they are. If no fee is due, clicking the Checkout button completes the reservation. If a fee is due, clicking the Checkout button takes the user directly to the pending payment page to create their payment. For this demo, keep in mind that the resource scheduler is still in test mode, so it will not create any actual transactions. If your club makes selected resources available to non-members, when they check out, the system will first prompt for their contact information, which is then stored in the non-member database under Reservation Request category. And if no fee is due, clicking Complete Reservation will do just that. If a fee is due, the user is taken directly to the Pending Payments page to complete the payment. If the current user is also an administrator or a module coordinator, the system will display three radio buttons asking if the reservation is for yourself, or if it's for another member, or for a non-member. From that point forward, it behaves like one of the previous options. Also, some items like the barometer logger requires approval by an administrator. When a member looks at his or her reservation history, any pending approvals are shown, as are any items that have been rejected. If an item was rejected, an email stating the reason for the rejection is sent to the member, and the item is removed from the reservation, so the rest of the reservation proceeds normally, generally to the payments page. There are a few more things to note about reservations. Resources may be defined with the required setup and cleanup time. For example, staff may need some time to set up a meeting room for your event and then to clean up once the event is over. These times will be added to your reservation as unavailable. If a fee is due, it's only charged for the actual duration of the reservation, not including the setup and cleanup times. Once a reservation is confirmed, the system will send the confirmation email to the member or non-member making the reservation. Optionally, an item can be configured to notify an administrator or module coordinator that a reservation has been made. And if the user selected the Notify Others option, those emails are also sent. To view the reserved items, a member can visit his or her profile page and click on Reservation History to display a list that can be filtered for the most recent 12 or 24 months or show all items. If any items are waiting for approval or pending payment, they can be canceled by clicking the icon. So now you've seen how people can use the Resource Scheduler to reserve items and how members can review and manage their reservations. If you're an administrator or coordinator, please watch the companion video for details on Resource Scheduling Administration. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.